Welcome back to the second installment of Engines of Britain. This time, it will be about the Class 3 of 5. I know how I am delaying the Class 331 video a lot, which I understand may suck for some of you. And it will not come soon as I want TFL Mysteries to actually begin after 4 months. Also, expect two videos about the Cross City Line in Birmingham soon. Anyway, let's begin, shall we? The Class 3 of 5 is, and it still is, an electric multiple unit, or EMU for short, built by Hitachi Rail for service on the operator of Valia Scotrail, now just Scotrail. A total of 70 units have been built as of June 2023, and they are quite a common sight in most of Scotland. Two variants of the 385 have been made, the 385 stroke 0 and the 385 stroke 1, with the latter having a first class section. They were powered by AC overhead wires, unlike most other Scotrail trains that existed before the 385. They had a max capacity of 206 for the 385 stroke 0 and 273 for the 385 stroke 1, and they were part of the Hitachi A train family. Now that we know some of the basic information, let's talk about their history. The 385's history dates back to 2014, when the Scotrail brand was taken over by Abelio. Abelia soon after announced that they made an agreement with Japanese manufacturer Hitachi Rail to make her an emu to serve parts of the Scotrail network that were electrified. For example, the line between Edinburgh and Glasgow via Falkirk High. In April 2015, Abelia signed a contract with Hitachi to build 70 new emus at the cost of £465 million. The train sets were going to replace most other train sets on the Edinburgh to Glasgow via Falkirk High Line, which was recently electrified. Construction on the unit started in late 2015, with the first one being delivered in December of 2016. Originally, it was thought that they would become fully operational in autumn of 2017, or fall of 2017 if you're American, but several issues delayed this date further. As a side fact, 10 more 385 stroke zero trains were to be built if Transport Scotland made an option to extend Abelia Scotrail's contract from 7 to 10 years, and they would have entered service in 2023. But now that it is 2023, and we haven't heard anything about this, it will probably never happen. In 2018, reports came in about poor visibility during testing which was most likely the result of the 3 at 5's curved driver windows, leading to drivers seeing two or three signals when only one was present. After this issue was fixed, the units could enter service on the 24th of July 2018. And not soon after, the 3 at 5 started replacing many other Scotrail trains quickly. Ignoring that epic 385 edit, all train sets were briefly withdrawn in October of 2018 due to a critical issue which Scotrail won't tell me what it is. But anyway, they started running again that same month, so it was not a big deal. In November that same year, 10 more 385s were diagrammed for service. Eventually, they rose to 32 and then 58. Unfortunately, those deliveries were delayed. So Squatrail hired 10 Class 365s to fill in the gap between 2018 and 2019. In the latter year, all 70 Class 3 of 5s were delivered to the company. They were put in service on the lines too. Okay, this is going to be a long list. Croy, Dunblane, Carstairs, the Shorts Lines, the Cathcart Circle, the Inverclyde Line, and the lines to North Berwick and Lancut. On top of that, the 385 also allowed Scotrail to replace older trains on their fleet, like the Class 314. The 385's introduction came along with multiple timetable changes, like eight coach trains on the Edinburgh to Glasgow mainline, which necessitated the extension of the platforms at the line's western terminus at Glasgow Queen Street. They had a generally normal service life after their introduction, and they became quite common in Scotland. That is all I had to say about the 385s, in short. They had a rather eventful history which paid off in being a decent train. That was the class 3 at 5 for you there. Please like and subscribe if you like videos like this. Have a good day and I will see you next time in another Engines of Britain video.